So I just quickly want to talk you through um, how this scene is set up. So to start with, we have um, the main camera, which contains the C-Sound Unity. I've pulled the C-Sound Unity component into this main camera, and it's playing a C-Sound file called sequencer.csd. So as soon as this game starts, or the scene starts, I won't call it a game, as soon as the scene starts, C-Sound is going to start processing. It's going to start, it's going to basically trigger this sequencer.csd orchestra to play. Okay. Um, now on the actual main controller script, I've got eight cubes, so I basically just drag, drag each one of those cubes onto the main camera. That gives me access to each of those cubes, which is important. I need that for the main controller. Then in the main controller here, I'll just get this out of the way if I can. Get it close. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. So here's the main script. Um, I've created a CSound a private CSON Unity member. And the first thing I do then in the start is I basically get that component and then I can call CSON set tempo. So I uh, set channel, so I'm gonna pass channel information to CSON. I'll show you the CSON file in a minute. Uh, and I'm gonna set the tempo to be two. Um, when I press up or down in the scene, I'm going to send information to CSON increasing or decreasing the tempo. If the current beat, which is marked up here, if the current beat is equal to the beat that's set in C sound, then I want to resize the cube. So what's happening here is C sound is driving all the visual stuff. So Unity is just waiting. The update function is going to be called once per frame. If C sound is moved to a new index, which is a new cube, then it's going to resize the cube. Just using the simple resize method down here. Uh, the other thing that you've got then is enable cube to play, which is a function that's called from my cube, from the cube controller script. Um, when I click on a cube, it's going to change the color of the cube. Actually, I can show you here. When I so this is a script that's attached to each of the cubes. First thing I do is I create two new colors. They're gonna be the on and off color for that particular cube. On a mouse down, I'm setting the color to on or to off, depending on the state, whether the cube is on or off. And then I am grabbing this, so the main camera. So I've got the C sound script on the main camera. And that's, so this is the main controller. This is the script that's on the main camera. In here, I've got this enable cube to play sound method. And here I'm going to call that enable cube to play sound method. And I'm gonna pass the cube index, which is something I get from here. So each cube in the scene is named cube one, cube two, cube three, cube four. And all I do here is I just do a substring kind of routine index of blah, 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 to get the index of the cube, because that's kind of important. So the C sound file is quite simple. Uh, here you've just got this instrument seek for sequencer. You've got an array. There are the eight cube values at the moment. At the start, they're just all zeros. This is your tempo. So every time we increase the tempo in Unity, that information gets sent to C sound, and we can pick it up using Chan get. Then I have a metro, and every time this metro, every time the metro triggers, this this code is going to be entered. It's going to be read, and then I'm saying if notes k beat which is the current beat is equal to one then play this synth which is just a very simple synth it's just a, um, a sine wave synth with a simple exponential envelope and then i'm going to increase the k beat so the k beat is the index and it's going to keep going between zero and seven zero and seven as the you know the, if you like the scrubber or whatever is moving through the cu cubes uh, k update index so when we click on a cube in the game it triggers, so when we do the on mouse down, so when we trigger a cube in the game, it's gonna send, it's gonna trigger this function, and then we're gonna send the cube that we just hit, the index of the cube that we just hit, will be sent to update table, to the channel update table. So CSUN then picks up the, l you know, the most recent index that was hit, and then it's going to set that. So it's gonna set that array index either one or zero, depending on if the cube was on or if the cube was off. Um, that instrument is running all the time. This function table is absolutely useless. I had done this with function tables before and then, you know, I forgot that we can use arrays now in CSound, so I'll just use arrays. And the whole thing when you play it, oh no, I started live, oh God. Let me just um, kill live. Task manager, live, goodbye, end task. Now that might be an issue because it might have started some of the audio devices, so we might not get it here, but anyway, let's try. So we should get a dong. Yeah, okay. 
I'm going to save this and close it. And I'm just going to restart it again. That's live. Uh, now, so I find that sometimes when you have other audio software open and then you're doing audio stuff in Unity and then you go back to it, uh, you can have some issues, but I'm pretty sure it'll be okay now. So when I click on these cubes, so we do that. So each time we click on one of these cubes, we're sending information to C-Sound. At the same time, C-Sound is sending information to Unity to let us know exactly what cube or which cube should be resized. So it's kind of two-way communication, if you like. Um, the Unity project and instructions are given in the, um, in the text below the video. Okay, over and out. <laughs>